Hello, precious people of the earth. Thank you all for being here today. I want to have a delicate discussion with you about rejection. Now, this is something that I'm sure we are all familiar with, unfortunately. And I want to shed light on it because I feel as though it's not talked about enough. We live in an age now where social media is the going thing. And it's a matter of rejection being at our doorstep 24-7. Whether it be not getting enough likes, whether it be not getting enough views, there's always an opportunity for us to be rejected. I feel as though I am currently in a season where I am shedding off all of the tactics of the enemy. And as I'm in the process of that, he is working even harder, I feel, to knock me off, to get me all worked up, to have me feel as though I'm still bound. So what better way to combat the tactics of the enemy than to bring it to light. Now, from my first or earliest memories of rejection, it was in the school setting as many of us probably had the same experience. There would be so many nights I would come home crying to my mom, asking her to cut my hair off as the new kid on the block, I only wanted to fit in. And to my dismay, my hair was different from the other girls in my classroom. My hair was long and wavy, and for some reason that was not to their liking. So after many nights of crying, my mom finally decided to put my hair into two ponytails and chop it off. And it wasn't until later she knew why I wanted my hair cut off. I think that is a example of one of my first experiences in rejecting myself because I was not accepted by the group of girls I grew up with, I altered my appearance to appease them and to make them feel more comfortable. Within many settings growing up, being around family, there were the same instances where we would go on trips together and comments would be made about our luggage little tiny comments of why do you have so many bags where are you going or you're doing the most so to speak or being at family reunions and coming to the function with a little bit of lip gloss on and a cute earring and it being said that my family was bougie now these might seem like little things, but what happens when they're said over and over and over again and you hear them so regularly, you start to believe the lie. And it's even more so painful when these things and comments are being made by people that are supposed to love you and accept you. So those experiences growing up when I was younger were the foundation of my life. The foundation that I stood upon was that I wasn't enough, that I wasn't accepted. Even growing up as a biracial individual, it was always a tug of war of what 
category I fit into? What box do I check? What group of people do I relate to? I remember coming into settings in different environments and people gawking at my family because we looked different. Because my dad was a Mexican American that had white skin. My mom had beautiful brown skin, but unfortunately she was too white for the black community. My sister had hair that looked like Lilo and I had chinky eyes. People were confused and they didn't understand how to accept my family. So a better way to make themselves feel comfortable than to tear us down. And that was my experience growing up, not knowing where I fit, not speaking enough Spanish to be considered Mexican enough or speaking too proper and being made fun of because I say chocolate using all of the syllables and not being black enough. A comment was made the other day and I'm still trying to determine what that comment meant, but a woman came to me and we got on the topic of what I like to eat. And she asked me very boldly, do you like rice? I didn't really respond because what? What does that matter? Again, do you like rice? Well, yeah, sure. Rice is good. The response. Oh, it looks like it. Look at your cheeks. Or hanging out with friends and being with another adult in my lifetime and me telling her, I don't eat meat. I am a pescatarian. That is someone that doesn't eat land animals or birds. It is something that I choose to do out of my preference. And the comment is made. Oh, it doesn't look like it. A comment made simply because my hips are a little bit wider than hers. Because I have a different body structure than her. A comment was made to bring down another woman because she was maybe not comfortable in her own skin. Rejection. Having conversations with my best friend and telling her, I got a new car, my first car. And the response being, I hate that car. I've always hated that type of car. Oh. Okay. Or letting her know that I got a new phone case and I'm so excited because it's glittery and I like sparkles and the comment being made. That's for children. Sparkles are for like seven year olds. The comments seem so small and so minuscule, but what happens when those comments are consistently made throughout your lifetime, from childhood to adulthood, over and over and over again, people speaking to me or to my family in a way that says that we are not enough, that says that something's wrong with the way that we are, the way that we carry ourselves and how we conduct ourselves in society. What does that do to the narrative of our life, to the story that we tell for ourselves? In my most recent experience, I've come out of an uncomfortable setting, an uncomfortable experience of depression and during that time of depression, I didn't want to be around anyone. I didn't want anyone in my space. I didn't want to socialize or interact. But now that I have started to feel much better, I decided to open my home. 
to a group of ladies and fellowship. And I wanted it to be done with excellence because that's how I was raised. That's how my mother taught me. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I set up my spread. I had vegetarian lasagna, a cheese board, little sweet treats and sparkling juice. I wanted everyone to feel comfortable and all the while of me being in the process of setting up this environment for these women, I considered not doing what I was doing because I didn't wanna come off as though I was doing the most. But I decided to come against that. I decided to fight and come against what the enemy was trying to get me to not do, which was to be different than who I am. And lo and behold, a comment was made. Look at you, overachiever. What happens when these little comments are made over and over and over again? I have found throughout my lifetime that I have started to take pieces of myself and lay them down just to make others feel comfortable. I have altered who I am to be accepted. I have changed the way I walk and talk and the way that I do things so that people will want me. And I wonder how many of us have the same story to tell. Within this process, within me understanding why this has happened over and over again, why I have been so rejected throughout my lifetime, I was finally able to see it from my Heavenly Father's perspective. And I realized, my God, is this what Jesus experienced? over and over and over again, not being wanted by people, not being accepted by people. But his response is such a beautiful one to keep in mind and to follow. And that comes from Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And in this process of recognizing all the experiences of rejection and the experiences of rejection that continue to come my way, the one thing that I can stand firm on is forgiveness. The experiences of rejection and people coming against me and attacking me in every way, shape and form is only the enemy at work. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And that is the way that we can be reminded that in those moments of being rejected and not being accepted is to pause before we respond and recognize within how can I respond to make a difference in this situation. What can I say or do to change the narrative of what is happening right now? In those moments, if we are able to reflect, if we are able to rest in our Heavenly Father and seek Him for wisdom and understanding, then we will be able to change these situations and not look at them as a matter of being rejected or unwanted, but simply a matter of us being able to grow from the way that we choose to respond with that being with light and with love. The only person that I have control over is myself. So if when those moments come about, if I can look within and truly, truly understand 
what I'm feeling in that moment and how I choose to respond, if I can do that in a more productive manner, then how much better will those situations of rejection be? It starts with us. So I encourage you, if you have experienced rejection throughout your life, first and foremost know that you are wanted, you are accepted, and you are loved. And anything that comes against that is simply a lie of the enemy. You are wanted, you are accepted, and you are loved. I find that whenever the enemy uses rejection, the lies become embedded into our thought processes. And I find that with the simple lie of saying that I'm not wanted, causes me to then believe that lie and to walk in that lie and to follow suit with what the enemy is telling me. So we have to combat that. For me, it has been very helpful that when I hear the lie, I come against it. You're not loved, you're not wanted. I am a child of the king. That's not true, what you're saying. I know who I am in Christ. That person was not willing to accept me for me, but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with me. I am who God has created me to be. And that's enough for my heavenly father. And the more you start to say these things over and over again, these beautiful truths, the rejection doesn't even matter anymore. If you are experiencing rejection, and if you are going through feelings of, that feelings that you are not wanted, please know that I am here with you. And if you need to talk, if you want to just share what you're feeling, I'm here to be a listening ear. We're in this together. The enemy will want us to feel as though we're in isolation but that's not the case. Community is important and community is going to be what gets us through it. So I'm bringing it to the light, this delicate discussion, this uncomfortable discussion of rejection. And I'm here to talk about it with you. I'll be seeing you next time.